Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, we're gonna be doing something very special. We're gonna be jumping into the lake house in Microsoft Fabric and specifically the notebooks. So we're gonna be doing some data engineering in PySpark notebooks. And we're gonna be following on from the project that we started in the last video. So if you remember, we queried an external API, it was weather data. And we got some data from the API in JSON format using a data pipeline. And then we loaded that into the lake house files area. So now we're gonna be taking that JSON file, we're gonna be reading it into PySpark, into a data frame, and we're gonna be doing some transformation and some cleaning steps within the notebook experience using PySpark, and then we're gonna load it into a table. Because once it gets into a table, that's when we can start doing analytics and data science and all this cool stuff. That's kind of like the core purpose of a lake house, is to get files and transform them into tables so that we can use them for more downstream analytics tasks. So that's gonna be the focus of this video. Let's jump into it. Okay, so here I am in the lake house and just to continue where we left off the last video. So we created this folder structure actually dynamically in our data pipeline. And in the root of this, or in the, in the lower, lowest level of this folder, we have a JSON file just for the purposes of this demonstration. And this is the JSON file that we're gonna load into a notebook. So let's open up this notebook. So I've prepared some cells for us in a notebook here, and we're gonna work through this notebook together. And just to give you a bit of an overview of the high level steps here, what we're gonna be doing is loading from JSON to a PySpark data frame. Then we're gonna be cleaning and validating the data. And then finally, we're gonna be loading that data frame into a lake house table. So those are gonna be the three steps that we're gonna follow. Okay, so first things first, what we're gonna be doing is reading the data from the JSON file into a PySpark data frame. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just drop some code in here and I'll explain it to you now. So what we're doing is we're defining the JSON file path. So we can get that quite easily. Either we can get it dynamically or we can use this copy relative path for Spark. So when we do that, it's gonna return, let me just show you this. It's gonna return that folder. And then if we click on a specific one, so if I open up this folder, then we can, do the, we can also do the same for this copy relative path and we'll also get the file name attached to it like so. So that's where this is coming from here. Then we're gonna be creating a Spark data frame. So we don't have to initialize the Spark session or anything like that. It's just automatically generated for us. So we're saying Spark read JSON from our file path. And if we run that and we're just displaying the results. So let's just see what that looks like then. Okay, so it's successfully loaded into a data frame and this is what our data looks like. So we have base, column, some cloud information. We can see there's actually lower levels of JSON, kind of nested JSON in this JSON file. So that would be something that we need to clean. And again, we've got some stuff here, coordinate data, which will be very useful for our analytics got a DT which is date time and we've got some other things down here so what I've also done is connected to my lake house using Azure Storage Explorer and what I've done is I've downloaded I've gone into this file again I have found the same file that we're looking at in our notebook in Azure Storage Explorer and from here we can download it and take a look at the actual raw file if we want to have a look at the structure. Because when we're trying to transform the JSON and read the JSON, you need to understand what the current structure is because you're gonna to have to write code that matches that structure or, or reflects that structure. So here what I've done is I've just opened up Visual Code, Visual Studio Code, and this is the JSON. It's a very small document, it's only one row of data and it's weather data 
for a specific point in time saying what is the weather like at this specific time in this specific location. So we can see we've got some coordinates, we've got some weather. So this is the data that we want to flatten out and destructure so that we can put it into a table. So let's move into step two, the cleaning of the data. Just to give you a bit of an outline of the cleaning steps that I've chosen to do in this tutorial. So we have flattening the structure. So we've talked about that one already. Then what I've noticed in the original file is that the temperature values are actually in Kelvin. So you can see here it's 296. And at first I was like, what is that? Um, but it's obviously returning the data in Kelvin. So we're gonna have to transform that into, I'm suggesting both Celsius and Fahrenheit because the users of our dashboard might want to see both. So we'll convert into both. We'll do some rounding and we'll also do some date time conversion as well. That's a very popular and common data engineering task that we do every day, basically. And then we're gonna look at how we can make our code more robust because we might be thinking, well, why would you do this in a notebook? Why don't you just do this in Power Query? Maybe you're coming from a Power BI background and you think, well, I can do this in Power Query, why do I not just do it all in Power Query? Well, Power Query has its limitations, especially around data validation and testing and making sure that the data, that your pipeline won't fail. You need to make your pipelines as robust as possible. And by doing that in code, we can guarantee that the data that we're being, that we're passing through the pipeline meets certain criteria. So that's what we do or at least start to do in section five. So we're gonna start off with this bit of code here. So what I've done is I've just copied in, just so you don't have to see me type it all out, but we're gonna be using the col column from the PySpark.sql.functions library. And that's kind of built into PySpark. So you don't have to install anything. But what that's gonna do is we can use df.select to select columns from the JSON structure. And so what we're saying is, okay, get me the DT column and we're gonna alias it. So we're gonna change the name of the column to date time. Now this one, it gets quite interesting because we can go inside uh, one layer down in the nesting of the JSON and say, okay, get me the coordinate object and I want the lat attribute from that object. And I'm gonna return that as geo latitude. So that's what we're gonna be doing here. And the same again for the longitude as well. Then we're gonna get the main, main temp and we're gonna return it as temperature initially. And let's just see what that gives us. Okay, so I've just printed the schema here and we can see that we have date time column, a geo lat and geo long, and a temperature. And so what I'm gonna do also is just use display to view the results here. Okay, so this is what it looks like. We've got one row of data. We've got geo latitude, geo longitude. We've got our date time, which is actually still in Unix Unix date time. So we need to convert that into a proper date time. Um, then we've got the temperature in Kelvin. So there's quite a lot of cleaning that we need to do to this bit of data before we can load it into our lake house. So let's do some of that now. So the first things first is we can convert this date time. And what we can do is we can use another function called to timestamp. So what we can do is add this in here, like so. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah, missing. Okay, so now it's actually converted that into a date time. And there we go, date time is timestamp. 
Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is to create a temperature. What I'm going to do is convert this to Kelvin. And then I'm going to add some new temperatures. So here we've got temperature Kelvin. I'm going to change this to temperature Celsius. And we're going to add in a temperature Fahrenheit. So what we're going to have to do is create some logic or some, some math, basically, to convert all of the values in that temperature column into both Celsius and Fahrenheit. OK, so to convert to Celsius, what we're going to do is minus 273.15. And that's going to give us our Celsius. And for the temperature in Fahrenheit, what we're going to do, it's a bit more complicated, this one. So this is our temperature in Fahrenheit. So now that we've run that, let's take a look at what we've got. OK, so now we have some values, so 13 degrees Celsius and 55 or 56 degrees Fahrenheit. So that looks good. And I've also validated that, that this calculations as well, just to make sure that those are the correct calculations. And so that was the temperature at 520 this morning when the pipeline ran in London. So, so that's good. I think what we could probably also do is round these numbers because that's we don't really need 10 decimal places. So that's quite easy to do as well. So we're just going to do round and we're going to wrap all of that into this too. And round is actually a separate function that we need to bring in as well. So again, round. So let's run this again. All right, so now we're getting there. So now we've got our temperature in Kelvin, Celsius, and in Fahrenheit. And we've got our geolat longs, and we've got our date time. So that's getting there. So now we've done quite a lot of stuff here. So let's have a look at what we were planning to do. So we've done this one. We've rounded it to two decimal places. We've converted the Unix to date time. And now we're just going to tidy up this code a little bit. So what I don't like is all of this. So this is where it starts to get a little bit messy to look at. And if you can't quickly understand what the code is doing, then it's probably a good time to refactor what, what you're trying to do here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some functions to ab abstract out this logic here. So I've already created these functions. and I'm just going to copy these in and then we'll, we'll go through them in, in a minute. So we've got, we've abstracted this into a function here. And the function takes as input the Unix date time column, which is this dt. And it returns the two timestamp. So that's a very simple function. So you might be thinking, why are you abstracting that as a function? Well, now we can test that function. We can do unit testing. We can add in validation steps to that function so that every time that function is called, we're running a validation set. And that's something I'll be covering in my next video. So make sure you're subscribed because we're going to be going through data validation in a lot more detail in the next video. But for this video, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this in here passing in our column and the alias is still the same and we have another column called temperature conversion and that takes as input our kelvin column and also two units so we want to pass in which unit we want to convert to is it going to be to celsius or to fahrenheit and then we're going to check for well if it's to if it's deg what we're going to do is return the degrees, the, the Celsius. So that should actually be Celsius. Whereas if the two unit is far, then Fahrenheit, then we do the Fahrenheit calculation. So let's just uh, update this as well. So this is what this looks like. And I'm going to change this as well. 
So now we've got this function, temperature conversion, and we're passing in the temperature in Kelvin and passing in to unit Celsius. And that's going to return the, uh, the correct value for this column. So let me just rerun that again, just to make sure that it still works. And it doesn't, obviously. Ah, oh, yeah, I can remove this. So I've just had to remove some brackets there. Got, always got too many, too many brackets. Okay, so now our code has run again. We've got the date time. That's been con successfully transform, transformed. Now we've got three temperature values in Kelvin degrees that we've rounded off and in Fahrenheit. Okay, perfect. So now we're going to move into the next part, which is loading the data into a lake house table. And this is going to be quite a simple step. So to load the data into our lake house, remember we've got some tables, but this is not re relevant table. This is a, a, a random table that already exists in this lake house. So there's nothing in there currently. And what we're going to do is we're going to call the write function on our flattened data frame object. And we're going to pass in the format, which is delta. We know that delta is the format that's used in Lakehouse. And we're going to give it an append because this is going to run every day. So what we want to do is append that data onto the Lakehouse table to kind of create a historic record of all these values that we can use in our analysis. And then we're going to pass the table name that we want to create. So I've just made historic weather data. So now if we run this, okay, so now we can see our historic weather data has been loaded into our lake house. And that concludes this tutorial. So what we've done is we've taken a raw JSON file from our lake house files area. We've read it into a PySpark data frame and we've done some cleaning and some transformation steps on it before loading it into a lake house table. And in the next video, we're gonna be doing some data validation on this. We're gonna be adding some data validation to this notebook. So that's gonna be very exciting. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.